Hey everybody, Felix Stoffelbaker here. I wanted to make a video just about volatility in the markets and people being scared and people not wanting to invest and you know just the crazy volatility that makes Bitcoin so great. There's so many people I talk to who say that they don't invest in Bitcoin because uh, they'll lose money or for this or for that and I just don't think people really take into account how much Bitcoin uh, is actually the number one asset and how it will bleed out all other assets into it. So we see that Bitcoin has gone up an average of $11 a day every single day since the first day that it was created and released back in 2009. And that's an average of 200% for over 10 years. Every year, it's gone up an average of 200%. And so there's a lot of people who say Bitcoin's volatile or that they're going to lose their money by investing in it. But if you look at the past, that's simply not true and that simply has no bearing in reality. And what happens is these asset managers, these hedge fund managers, these people who really understand assets and are seeking returns will start to take a look at something like Bitcoin and say, okay, it's had 200% growth annually for the past 10 years. You know, I need to be cut in on that because my portfolio may have netted 14% this year and I thought that I was doing good or I was a top performer. And, you know, there are other assets that are less volatile and returns are, are less that will bleed into stronger assets like Bitcoin and EOS because the volatility is high, but also the uh, percentage gains is very high and the annual rate of return is very high, much, much more than they would get if they were to stay where they are. And, you know, this is the case for something like gold. This is the case for something like the stock market, other commodities, even though we're entering another commodities uh, bull run at the top already, it's because of things like money printing that will raise all assets. You know, your, your groceries, your utilities, everything could 30x. You know, that's not out of the realm of possibility and is probably more in the field of possibility. And so we're seeing these people who manage these billions and in some cases trillions of dollars looking for an asset that will save their their capital and preserve their wealth and the only thing right now that's doing that on a on a massive scale with a proven track record is bitcoin and so i really see a lot of these assets like gold like the stock market all these weak assets and in nominal terms, you know, gold is at an all-time low, even though the price is at an all-time high. Um, you know, there, it's just not necessarily the best time to jump into gold uh, as far as, you know, timing, whatever. But that's a whole nother issue. But basically, when you have a weak asset, the laws of nature will dictate that weaker assets bleed out into stronger assets, something like Bitcoin, all the way, they'll bleed out all the way until everything is equalized and Bitcoin gives that seven to 10 percent rate of return of, of growth you know per year. <clears throat> so right now we're still seeing the 200 plus percent on average a year growth. and so, as long as that's kept up and as long as those kinds of numbers are that high, you can guarantee that other assets are going to bleed out liquidity into Bitcoin. And then once things are into Bitcoin, 
that's when they start to trickle down to some of the altcoins and some of the other tokens that uh, are undervalued but have strong technicals and strong fundamentals in that light I see definitely EOS and I see <clears throat> at some point you know Bitcoin bleeding a little bit into EOS especially once it's running seamlessly on top of it there's no reason why people wouldn't move liquidity from Bitcoin into EOS to be able to utilize the network or to be a block producer there's all sorts of reasons why people would want to own EOS once they find out about Bitcoin and the rate of returns and what EOS is going to offer so you know I really see assets moving from where they are in weak terms to bleed out into Bitcoin until all the uh, percentages are pretty much on par with that of a traditional asset and you know that that could be somewhere Bitcoin in the four to five hundred thousand dollar range before those kind of returns uh, slow down to that kind of level because we just had the having and there's more demand than there's ever been you know we're on the verge of proliferating a global currency a global network a global asset and so you know it's still got a lot a lot of room to grow and I think it will but people need to pay attention to the other assets and how they may be affected by Bitcoin and how it just may eat the lunch of everything involved. So I just want to put that out there. Stoffel Baker out.